If you were listening carefully to the scripture readings, they, in essence, take you on a kind of emotional journey. Uh, it begins, of course, with Amos, and Amos's extraordinarily harsh words to the king, in essence, pronouncing irrevocable judgment. You think it's bad for you now? <laughs> it's only going to get worse, as it is. And so, listening to that, at least my experience of hearing that is like, it's long way. Because I, I know it's in my heart. And then you go to the, the psalm, Psalm 19, and there's this, in some ways the psalm only makes it worse. <laughs> in the sense that you're acknowledging the rightness of God's judgments, the law of the Lord is perfect, the testimonies are sure, the statutes are just, I mean, yeah, and then, and then there's this little sort of reflective question. Who can tell how often he offends? Well, the answer to that rhetorical question is no one. Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. It's not as bad as I think it is. <laughs> or it's, you know, maybe not as good as it could be. And, and so he prays, rightly, the prayer that I often pray at the beginning of a sermon, let the words of my mouth, not just what I'm saying, but what's going on inside, and the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. So we get to the Gospel reading. And in some ways, what happens in the Gospel reading is the answer to both the judgment that is pronounced by Amos as well as the thoughtful reflections that are in the psalm. Because the story, incredibly familiar, told in a couple of different settings in the gospel, has these men approaching Jesus with the paralytic. And of course, what comes out of Jesus' mouth is, as it's translated here, take heart, or actually, probably more accurately, be, stay courageous. Um, and he says, and notice the way he says it, he says your sins are forgiven. And that kind of passive voice is in fact intentional. It would be, it's not the same as Jesus were to say, I am forgiving your sins. He's offering, in essence, a declaration that has been determined. Determined by whom? by God himself. I mean, Jesus at this point is speaking on behalf of the Holy Trinity. Your sins have been forgiven. And of course, which is why all of the questions that show up on the part of the religious leaders say, who is he to forgive sins? And Jesus calls out their thoughts and speaks to them very, very directly. Who has the authority? The Son of Man has authority to forgive sin. And I'm doing it. And just so you know that what I'm doing is accurate and a sign from God, I say to you, to the man, take up your bed and walk. And the man, of course, gets up and walks away. The people are astounded. What I, I want to bore in on is the, the, the play of what happens. The first words out of Jesus' mouth are, be courageous, take heart. And, and it's a, it's an, I love that. And what I love about that is these men, as well as the man on the, on the, on the, what, you, what would you call it? Sorry, I can't think of the mat. Yeah, the mat are acting incredibly, they presume a lot by coming to Jesus. They presume his goodness. They presume that he is not going to treat them the way others might, as in, well, if, you, if you're lame like that, then God must have something against you for this to have put fall in you. Uh, maybe you need to think about what you've done to see if you, in fact, deserve some kind of healing. Because it's clear that's what they're doing. They're, they're coming to bring this man to be healed. And yet Jesus does none of that. In fact, he blesses their boldness, in essence, by saying, be courageous. This is right. 
I love that about God. That it is in fact right to presume God's goodness. And to know that the declaration, in essence, that Jesus gives on behalf of the Holy Trinity is the entry has happened. You have been made right with God. Come on in. Come closer. Enter into what Hebrews would describe as the very holy of holies. What the writer says at that point, therefore, with boldness, we approach the throne of grace. And that that's, in fact, God's invitation to us. That he is looking, in fact, for men and women who are willing to step out based on what God has done, both in terms of their approach to God and, as it were, later in the scripture, acting on God's behalf to speak with that kind of grace and that kind of clarity. In essence, to step out based on this declared relationship the thing that it happens between us and God. But, and how can I do that? I can only do that if I know that I'm secure in who I am in Christ. That my sins have been forgiven. I have a place in heaven when I die. And I, therefore I can be about, as it were, my father's business because I belong to him. And he'll never let me go. That, as it were, he has my back. He is working in me that which is good. I can trust in him and know that no matter what happens, I can be about his business, that he is Lord, and that I can trust him, both for myself as well as my circumstances. So today, these who are coming to be confirmed and received are in essence acting upon that good promise. They're acting on the fact that sin has been forgiven. They're willing to step out into the place of mission and service, which is the assumption of this service. And that what God has not done with them is said, okay, let's, uh, let's think about this. You know, what's really going on in your life? And while that's not a bad question, the qualifiers to say yes to God are none. We can as we are, in other words. Say yes to Him and receive that assurance. And out of that, our lives are changed. And we can be about His business. Amen. Amen.